All right, Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash, double honors unto the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutation to the Akiyam, to the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, for in this truth and faith and sincerity. I'm the brother Shema Allah from the GMS Houston camp, and this lesson is going to be entitled, uh, This Child is Set for the Fall and Rising Again. Of many in Israel, and this was basically a prophecy, you know, on our Lord Yahweh Shai, all right, by a man named um, Simeon, you know, who the Lord basically was dealing with, and um, he basically told, you know, Joseph and Mary, you know, the impact that this child was going to have on the nation, the nation of Israel, the Israelites, right? Which are the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the true Israelites, you know, according to the scriptures, all right? The true people of the Lord, all right? The impact that he was going to have, you know, during his, you know, that uh, his lifetime, even, even now, you know, even now. But, you know, um, Many we're going to fall and rise, all right, based off of their belief in him, their belief in their unbelief, all right? There, you, you believe in the Lord, you know, and you have the elect, because the elect is the only one that's going to truly believe, right? Then that was going to grant you salvation, because salvation comes to Yahweh Shah. But the unbelief is going to bring the complete opposite, and you're going to be doomed unto destruction, Okay? So Yahweh Shah, like I said, he did, and still, all right, it's making a big impact in the planet Earth, you know, and a lot of people are rising, the elect are rising, right, but you also have the false prophets that are out here as well, right, but they're going to continue to, you know, diminish as the, the prophecies come to pass, right, that the true men of the Lord are prophesying about, are speaking about, okay, so they're literally gonna gonna be diminishing or falling. All right, the unbelievers, right? They they ain't gonna have no hope right in a time of destruction. All right, but the the Lord's you know elect they're gonna shine more and more. Okay. So I'm gonna start here in Luke two and twenty five. It says, "And behold, there's a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. See, so the Lord was dealing with him. All right, it said the Holy Spirit was upon him. And the Lord doesn't just send his Holy Spirit, you know, to anybody. All right. So because when you read this in the NLT, it says at that time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous. All right, and devout, and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him, so he was waiting all right, on the introduction of our Lord, waiting for the Lord to come on the scene, all right, waiting for the Lord to come back and basically save Israel out of you know this curse position that they were in. You know, the scriptures say that you know the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and violence take about by force. Israel was going through a lot, man, constantly. All right. He was ready for that to be over with. All right. Just as we are. He says, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's anointed. So it was revealed that he wasn't going to die until he seen Yahweh Shah. And he came by the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought in the child Yahweh Shah to do for him after the custom of the law. Then it took he up and then took he him up in his arms and blessed the Most High and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. So he believed, he seen Yahweh Shai and believed in him already as a, as, a, as a child. Okay. As a child, he praised the Most High and told him, you know, he's, he acknowledged Yahweh Shai as being that, that Savior. So which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, which is the Israelites. Okay, this is a savior unto the Israelites. It's a, a light to lighten the Gentiles, which are going into the Israelite foreigners that were being, <clears throat> you know, 
called the Gentiles, all right, because us not knowing this truth, okay, because we were Gentiles, all right, and we came into this light, which is Yahweh, okay, it says, in the glory of thy people, Israel, okay, it says, and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him, and Simeon blessed him and said unto, unto Mary his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Okay, so he says that he's going to be set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. So, and many people did speak against him because they didn't believe in him. Okay, and this is just all according to prophecy, right? Even today, when they not they don't believe in the words that we're saying. All right, it's because of prophecies like this. All right, and the words that we are saying come from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shaka. These are not our own words. We're we're reading out of these scriptures, all right, which the scriptures represent Yahweh Shah, right? It says he's the word. Okay, so when people can't believe, man, it's just it's all set up according to prophecy, because this is how the most high, you know, wanted things to happen. All right. And everything you got to play out according to how the scriptures say it's going to play out. But let's go here to Isaiah 8 and 14. It says, and he shall be for his sanctuary, and, but for, and he shall be for a sanctuary, or a sanctuary to the elect, okay? Because let's look up what a sanctuary. Okay. Makwadash. All right. A, a sacred place, a holy place of a temple. All right. Only the elect is going to look at him being as being sacred. All right. Only the elect is going to confide in him, right? Believe in him. It says, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel and for a gen and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Okay. So it's going to be a, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. So you're going to have people offended in the Lord and stumble as the Lord, right? Of him being the Messiah, of him, you know, I'm saying who he was as being the son of the Most High, right? A lot of people was not going to believe on him, you know, because people grew up with him, seeing how he came up, right? Seeing his father and his mother, right? And to, to, to them, he was just a regular individual. And then out of nowhere, you know, 30 years old, now you you just prophesying and saying this, 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 and that. Okay. All right. And it, it was it was hard for them to believe, especially since you know he was coming up against, you know, the uh the authority, you know, at that time, as far as like the chief priests and them and uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, right? Because they had they they had their top positions at that time, and they were the ones um um people would seek to, you know, and look to you know, for answers and, you know, for guidance and, you know, uh, people praised them, right? But Yahweh Shah came on the scene and he basically, you know, uh, changed all of that, all right? And it's and with sincerity and the truth and, and with the power of the most out actually behind him and working with him. And they were jealous and envious of that. So let's get... Um, since we spoke about the offenses, right? Matthew 18 and 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense coming. So offenses are gonna come, but woe to whom is offended. All right. And woe means basically destruction or death. So those who are offending the Lord are gonna get what's what's due unto them they're gonna fall as that's as according to that prophecy in luke all right those that stumble okay at the house shot don't believe who he is to scoff and mock okay right? hey you, they're gonna be destroyed and we just hope you know that we make it into the end that we of the elect you know of the ones that don't take part in in, in in the destruction because you know the battle and the fight is not over yet Okay, but these are this is what's going to happen to those who are offended. Okay, because 
You know, this is the this is the Messiah. This is the salvation of Israel. All right, so how, you, you were offended in the salvation of Israel. You know, why would salvation come unto you? Because first you got to believe, you know, that he is able to do these things and who he is and who he say he is. All right. This is um, Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel not attained that which he's seeking for, but the election have attained it and the rest were blinded. All right. So you're going to have those. You know, that basically they're seeking for the truth. They were seeking, you know, to be, you know, something, right? Seeking to, you know, be connected with the most side, be on some sort of level, all right? You know, but <laughs> they they didn't obtain it. I'm speaking about the time of, you know, Yahweh shot, right? When he was on the scene, okay? You know, they felt like that they were the ones you know, in authority, they were the top people. They were the ones that the Lord was dealing with, right? But you got this man to actually come, whom the Lord is actually with, all right? They didn't believe in him. And you had those, you know, those believers that actually did. They actually, you know, believed in Yahweh Shai, believed in, you know, uh, the lamb, right, that was set up by the Heavenly Father, right, to be a sacrifice for their sins, okay? That was the elect. They they was the ones who actually obtained it, but the rest were blinded. They were blinded by their own thoughts and emotions and envy and jealousy on the Lord. And they just couldn't accept him being that. Right? They knew a Messiah would come. They knew that he would come from the lineage of David. All right. But it was just the manner that Yahweh Shah came, that's just not what they expected. So since they didn't expect that, they rejected him. Okay, he came like a like a regular man. He had a regular birth, right? He didn't come. He didn't come in all glorious and was all kingly and this and that. And he was wearing all of the riches and the, and and the gold and you know just walking around full of pride and you know just boasting of who he is. And no, he didn't come like that. The Lord came in on a on, on a donkey, bro. He didn't have to do that. He could have got a, a magnificent horse, right? That was decorated, right? He could have came in on chariots and this and that. Not chariots, but actual UF, what they call UFOs, but actual chariots, like horses and chariots, right? It could have been decked out, but he didn't make a, a grand entrance like that, okay? He came meek and humble, and that was the, a totally different spirit than what these people were in. Okay, and Yahweh Shah's presence was was basically exposing them because he was what the Mosa truly wants us to be like, and he was exposing their thoughts and exposing the thing they're into. Like, bro, y'all don't really believe. So what y'all doing? Y'all hypocrites, right? On the outside, it may look like, but on the inside, y'all 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 dead. So he was constantly on them. It says according. As it is written, the Most High had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Right, because what they, the Yahweh shall also say, that no man can come unto me unless my father will send me draw him. So the Lord got to open your eyes to this. Okay, but the Lord put the spirit of slumber on people. Okay, also the spirit of delusion. And David said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. So the table, which is dealing with the scriptures, right, let it be a trap unto these people. And Yahweh Shai represents the, represents the scriptures. When you go to, to um, Psalm 68, it says that which should have been their welfare, let it be a trap unto them or a snare unto them. Let me see if I can find that. This is Psalm 68. Let's see. Let me see. Let me just look for it real quick. Psalm 69 and 22. Let that table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. So this is, Yahweh Shah is supposed to be a good thing for you because this is the salvation. He's going to take these curses off of us, all right? Take us out of captivity, restore unto Israel the kingdom, like they asked in Acts, the first chapter. Put us back in rulership. 
subdue the heathen, give us everlasting life, all these particular things, right? Take away sickness, death. All right, but now it's going to be a trap unto you. Now you're going to have to, to, to die because of your unbelief. Yeah, which I told him in John 8, chapter 8, hey, if you don't believe in me, you're going to die in your sins. Because Yahweh Shai covers our sins. Okay? So it's key to believing in. Let's get Matthew 13 and 9. It says, Who had ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came unto him and said, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. All right, so this is for the elect only. They're going to understand and believe and truly understand what Yahweh Shai is to us the meaning of this man, all right, and the importance of him, all right. That's why Peter, we said, You have the words of, 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 of eternal life. Where, should, what, where else I'm gonna go, all right? And y'all saying, We we forsook all for you, they understood, okay. A lot of people are not gonna see that and be able to acknowledge that. That man, this is. This is the son of the Most High. Peter said, we believe and are sure. All right? It's when Yahweh said, what flesh and blood had not revealed unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. So the Heavenly Father got to open your mind and reveal these things unto you. All right? But it's only given unto the elect. Uh, Matthew 13 and... And 54, it says, and when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in the synagogue and so much that they were astonished and said, once had this man his wisdom in, in these mighty works. So he was teaching, you know, doing miracles, this and that, right? He said, man, how the hell is he doing this? Like, where did this come from? Let's get this in the NLT. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown, when he taught there in the synagogue. Everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles, right? Where you get this from, bro? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Is this not the carpenter's son? Is is not his mother called Mary, his brother James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, and his sisters? Are they not with us? Are they not all with us? Whence had this man these things? Right? Where did he learn this? All right, what, what's going on? Is this this is this is a regular dude, man. We bro, we, we see his father and his mother and his brothers and his sisters, man. He came out just like them. All right. How the hell is he doing this? Okay, how is he speaking these wonderful things, the powerful things, and, and he got the the, the 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 miracles and all that behind in the back of him? This is a regular dude. We just came up with him. We just, bro, we just seen this dude come up as a baby. All right. It says, and they were offended in him. But y'all should say unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, in his own house. And he, not many, and he did not... Many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Okay, so they were offended at him. That they just couldn't understand why, like, like what was going on? Him? This guy? They couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't believe it. They take hold of it. And it was supposed to be like that. All right. Just so you could get the true believers. All right. And it was the same thing with John the Baptist. Uh, and how he was dressed and he was in the wheels and this, 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 and that. All right. Some people looked, you know, for somebody to be some glorious, but John wasn't like that. So Yahweh Shah said, you know, those that are dressed in soft raiment are in king's houses. And he was praising John. Hey, this man was more than a prophet. All right. John 4. <laughs> Seven dealing with the woman at the well, all right, which is a heathen. She said, they come in the woman to measure draw water. Yahweh Shah said, her, give me the drink. For the disciples were going away unto the city to buy me. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew ask a drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans, right? Which is it's a whole bunch of history going to that, which that's another, you know, um topic, you know, for another day. All right, because you had this, you had Jews, you know, dwelling you know, in that land as well, okay? But you had heathen mixed in amongst them. It says, Yahweh should answer said to her, if thou knewest the gift of the Mosai, who is it that said to thee, give me the drink, thou wouldst ask of him, and would have given thee living water. So it said, if you knew who you was talking to, if you understood 
you be asking you be asking me for water. Okay, so it's the same thing with these people, bro. If they actually understood and knew what y'all what y'all was trying to represent and what he what he was, what he was said to be his actual importance, man. <laughs> Bro, that would change the game. All right, but the, but the Lord don't let them think like that. The Lord haven't allowed them over their mind to think like that. A lot of these people, man, they wouldn't be scoffing and mocking. They truly understood what was going to happen and what was going to be the result of that, of them doing this, right? Scoffing at the Lord, scoffing at his prophets, right? The word, being an unbeliever. Like where they're gonna end up in these last days by result of that, right? Opposed to what you will where you will end up if you are a believer and you endure to the end, the salvation, right? Bruh. <laughs> they get in line, but it's not meant for them to. This is John 4 and 22. You worship, you know not what we know we worship for salvations of the Jews. But the hour coming and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and the truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. This is what this, this is what it's all about. The Lord is concerned with the true worshipers, and the true worshipers will worship him and rise in the latter days and are rising. All right, and we believe that we are those of that, that number. All right, but you're gonna have those that are not the true worshipers that the Lord is gonna have to just do away with. All right, and they're gonna fall. So, this lesson was edifying. With that, I'm going to say, Shalom.